Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 21.2 biotechnology. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 21.2 you need to describe the role of yeast in biofuel and bread production, describe the use of pectinase in fruit juice production and investigate and describe the use of biological washing powders. For extended you also need to explain the use of lactase to produce lactase free milk, describe the use of fermenters in making products like insulin and penicillin, and describe and explain the conditions that need to be controlled in a fermenter. Biotechnology involves the use of biological organisms or systems in manufacturing or other industrial processes. Examples of products that rely on biotechnology include biofuels, leavened bread, fruit juice and biological washing powders. Yeast cells derive their energy through anaerobic respiration, whereby glucose is broken down to release energy and the byproducts of carbon dioxide and ethanol, which is highly flammable. Biofuels are produced by fermenting large quantities of sugar or grain and then extracting and refining the ethanol. Ethanol releases fewer harmful emissions than petrol does and is renewable since the plants from which it's produced can be regrown. Bread making also relies on yeast. The carbon dioxide produced by anaerobic respiration forms air bubbles in the dough, causing the bread to rise. Pectin is a soluble fiber found in plant cell walls. It prevents fruits like apples from releasing their juice when squeezed and makes the juice cloudy. In commercial fruit juice production, enzymes called pectinases are added to break down the pectin. This helps to separate the juice from the fruit and makes the juice more transparent. Enzymes are also used in biological washing powders to remove tough stains. Lipases break down fats and oils, and proteases remove protein-based stains like blood or egg yolk. You need to be able to investigate the use of biological washing powders that contain enzymes. Break and whisk an egg. Spread the egg evenly onto four equally sized pieces of white cloth. Prepare four beakers, one with only warm water, the control, one with non-biological washing powder, one with biological washing powder, and one with biological washing powder that's been boiled and left to cool. Place a piece of cloth in each beaker, and after 30 minutes, remove and compare. Cloth C is the cleanest because enzymes in the biological washing powder break down the proteins and fats in the egg stain into small soluble molecules that can dissolve in the water and escape from the cloth. Solution B is less effective than solution C because it doesn't contain enzymes. Solution D is also less effective because boiling the water denatures the enzymes. Cloth A remains largely unchanged due to the absence of a cleaning agent. Okay, so that's everything you need to know for core, so we'll move on to the extended section, beginning with the production of lactose-free milk. Lactose is a sugar found in dairy products. Some people are intolerant to lactose because they don't produce enough of the enzyme that breaks it down. Instead, it's fermented by bacteria in the gut, leading to symptoms like bloating, stomach pain and flatulence. Lactose-free milk and other dairy products are made by adding the enzyme lactase to pre-digest the sugar. The lactose is broken down into simpler sugars, namely glucose and galactose, which are easily absorbed by the gut and don't cause symptoms. Lactase is produced on a large scale by fermenting yeasts and fungi in fermenters. Fermenters are large containers used to make useful products on an industrial scale. They provide a controlled environment with the perfect conditions for microorganisms like bacteria and fungi to grow and respire. As they respire, the microorganisms break down or ferment whatever substrate has been added to the fermenter, resulting in the formation of useful products like penicillin, a broad-spectrum antibiotic, insulin, used by diabetics to control blood sugar, and mycoprotein, a protein-rich substance presented as an alternative to meat. The conditions that need to be controlled in a fermenter include temperature, pH, oxygen, nutrient supply and waste products. Temperature is regulated to ensure that enzymes and microorganisms function optimally. As fermentation releases heat, fermenters generally need to be cooled down. pH is also controlled, as microbes cannot grow and function properly if conditions are overly acidic or alkaline. Oxygen helps to increase the growth rate of certain microorganisms, so air is blown through the contents of the fermenter and the solution is stirred. 
Microorganisms need carbohydrates, as well as some amino acids and minerals, in order to respire, grow and synthesize products. Some form of sugar-based solution is used. For example, yogurt is made by fermenting milk, which contains the sugar lactose, and wine by fermenting grape juice, containing glucose and fructose. Finally, waste products of fermentation may slow down or harm the microorganisms if allowed to accumulate, and are therefore continually removed. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 21.2, biotechnology. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 21.3, genetic modification.